What up guys, Orange Decent Cool here and today I have for you a Planet Side 2 Beginner's Guide. Planet Side 2 is a new free to play MMO FPS that's just been brought out by Sony Online Entertainment. For anyone that doesn't know what an MMO FPS actually is, it basically means this game is about constant large scale conflict between the three, three factions of the Terran Republic, the New Conglomerate, and the Vanu Sovereignty. The three factions are all at war with each other attempting to take control of the three continents of Araxis. Now each continent can actually hold up to 2000 players, which as you can probably tell is going to make some very very large battles. Now that probably means that anyone that's going to jump into this game, brand new to where Every, well, brand new to the entire thing is probably going to get very, very confused quite easily as to what they should actually be doing. So hopefully this beginner's guide will help you learn how to play this truly epic game. The first thing you've got to do is choose your faction. You've got the Vanu Sovereignty, which will be known as the VS, the New Conglomerate, the NC, and the Terran Republic, the TR. The VS want to use the new alien technology that they've found on these new continents and new planet to further their I mean, further the human race. The new conglomerate are basically a group of freedom fighters which wish to remove all oppression and believe, as it says here, a miserable free man is better off than a contented slave. Finally, the Terran Republic wish to unite all factions under one banner, known as the Terran Republic, and return back to their original home world of Earth. So I think we'll actually play VS for today. Choose the VS and then you've got your servers. You have a U the servers are in US East, US West, there's an Australian server and EU. No matter where you are in the world you can actually choose any of these servers. They're all available to play on. It just depends where you want to play with and who you want to play with basically. So I'll go for medium population EU server for now just so we've got some people to play with. Set your character name and choose your gender and your face type. It's not really that much customization to be made in the actual character but to be honest most of the time your character's actually wearing a helmet and so it doesn't really matter. So we we'll a male, have that helm and finish. Now there'll be a slight intro video to start us off and we'll just I'll just stay quiet and we can watch that now. Just possible wait for it to load up. You are moments away from being dropped from orbit into the thick of the fighting. If the Vanu sovereignty cannot guide the evolution of mankind without the interference of small minded despots and mercenaries, all of humanity is doomed. You must not fall. Your squad mates will be your strength, so stay close and do all that you can to aid your comrades in the field. Show the unenlightened what can be accomplished in the radiance of Banu's wisdom. Our rebirthing matrix ensures that death will have no hold over you. Our nano-reconstruction chambers can bring you back into the fight at any installation the VS controls. Nano-construction technology will allow you to create vehicles at any of our Empire's vehicle terminals. But you'll need to be sure you have the appropriate materials needed to replicate one. You'll learn everything you need by eliminating the enemy and holding as much territory as possible. So spread our banner across all of Araxis. We appear to be over the drop zone. Prepare yourself. Remember, you are part of the Vanu sovereignty. Your foes will evolve or they will perish. Good luck. So we get instantly dropped into a attack I mean a base and we start fighting. The first thing we probably want to do is Ooh. straight away we got someone to kill. Right now you're probably in the middle of nowhere and you don't know what the hell you're doing, so you're trying to attack everyone. Most likely gonna die in your first time. I'll just keep killing some people for now. See if I can survive. Oh, hello. Okay. So, what we're at now is an enemy base. We're currently at the NC's base. That is the NC's flag. And we are trying to attack this base. We'll just keep fighting here for now. Hope that turret doesn't see us. Yep. So, what we want to do is get into the base and try and take it out. Can't have been attacked by something, but I'll leave that for now. Okay, we've died, and the first thing you're probably going to want to do is 
once we respawn, choose your respawn location as our warp gate. Every constant there is a VS warp gate, a NC warp gate, and a TR warp gate. Each of these places, I mean, each of these is a safe zone for that empire. So if we were to spawn at the VS warp gate, this is now our safe zone. No one else can fight us here. No TR or NC can get in, and we can't do any damage. So if I'm to shoot any of these people, nothing happens to them. La di da. If I was to actually do that outside of the warp gate, I would receive grief points, and yeah, my friend and well, my friend Liz would probably take some damage and possibly die. So when you're actually fighting out in the real world, do be careful with your fire because friendly fire is on. So the first thing you want to do is how, where am I supposed to be going? If you open up your map by pressing M, you will hear now be able to see each of the consonants. Well, a map of each of the continents. You have three continents. You have Indor, Esamir, and Amirish. Now, to actually find out where you should be going and what you should be fighting against, you need to look at what territory we control, what territory the enemy controls, and where this kind of interlinks. We're the purples right now, because we're the VS, so anything that's purple is owned by us. Anything that's blue is owned by the NC, and anything that's red is owned by the TR. So we're currently on Inda, and we can see we've been pushed back quite a lot as VS and we are currently up against the borders of the NC and the TR at the same time. So anything along in any of the bases along this area is probably going to be where fighting is going to be at. You can see where the bases are with these little symbols there. Like there's the Ceres farm, there's the Highland Solar Station, Data Lab, there, so on, so on. So Basically, if we were to go up to any of these, we'd probably find some form of co conflict between us and the NC or the TR. The easiest way for you to get into uh, an actual fight is by these instant action buttons. If you click on this instant action, I'll just do that now, you get a countdown timer. Once the timer reaches zero, you then spawn into that place on the drop pod and you can start fighting instantly. But we still want to find out about our, I mean, what we can play with and our classes, etc. So we'll just exit out of the map and first things first you have different classes to choose from. To change your class you have equipment terminals. Any equipment terminal can be found on your minimap by following the little gun symbol which you can see there if you look at my map if you can see my mouse. But you can see the gun symbols on the map. Or by looking on your actual game screen and you'll see the gun symbols on top there. So you go up to the equipment terminal access the equipment and now you have the six classes. Now each class has their own special abilities and their own special weapons. The infiltrator is able to is a stealth class and is able to go invisible and uses and by so if I go invisible with the infiltrator I am the enemy can't see me very well, etc etc. Most of the infiltrator's weapons are sniper rifles, so the infiltrator is basically a reconnaissance class. It's about being sneaky, about trying to pick off targets from afar. They don't have much armor, but like I said, they are a reconnaissance class and a long range kind of class. The light assault is a basic assault class that you've got for the fighting against the enemy. They've got a decent amount of armor, they've got a decent amount of health, and decent close range weapons. Any light assault weapon is, well, just about all light assault weapons are assault rifles and a pistol. And the light assault also has a jetpack which can be used by pressing spacebar, or well, holding spacebar, and you can get into, you can kind of jump into bases by being sneaky. It's more of an attacking class more than anything else. Now you have the next one, which is the combat medic. The combat medic is able to heal friendlies with the the medical applicator. They have a basic assault rifle, they have their pistol as well, just the same as any other class, and they have the nanite healing tool. The healing tool can be used to heal any friendly characters or revive any friendly characters if they've already been killed. The medic special ability is that they if you turn on your special ability, the 
key to actually turn it on for both infiltrators and medics is F and that will all turn on a area of effect which will heal you and anyone in the nearest area. It's quite useful, helps keep the everyone pushing. The engineer, they have once again a basic assault rifle, a pistol and they have a armor repair kit. The armor repair kit can be used to repair equipment terminals, so if this had been destroyed I could use it to repair it. It can be used to repair vehicles, and it can also be used to repair a max suit. Uh, a engineer also has the ability to put down a resupply kit, which I will put down now. And that gives anyone in its vicinity ammo, and they also have access to a man turret. So you put that down, you then get on it and you've got a automatic turret to fire with. It's quite a useful defense class. Like I said this turret, well the tu you've got the turret and the turret's got a shield around it so it's good for defending yourself with. Now you've got the heavy assault. The heavy assault has a light machine gun with a lot of bullets and a lot of firepower and a lot of health. The they also have a rocket launcher which is used for which is useful for against anti vehicles and by pressing the E the F key they can also turn on a energy shield. It's quite a useful class for pushing against enemies, like if you've got a lot of healers behind you or for taking out any enemy vehicles. Finally, there is the max suit. The max suit is basically a very big, very hard hitting suit that you get with the ability to take a lot of damage and deal out a lot of damage to both infantry, vehicles and air. You have different weapons to choose from once you're actually certified into them. You have your Comet which is anti-vehicle, your Burster which is anti-air and your Quasar which is anti-infantry. Each, each of the different factions has their own specific anti-vehicle, anti-air, anti-infantry abilities but that's the basic of it so if I equip that now I can then use my max suit to do quite a lot of damage with a lot quite a lot of health and basically just attack quite well. The only problem with the max suit is once I get there the first problem being that maxes can't actually pilot vehicles the max is probably counted as a vehicle pretty much itself. It gets repaired by the engineers the same as a vehicle does and it's also got a respawn timer like a vehicle does. So if I was to die whilst I was wearing my max suit and then I'll do this as an example died whilst wearing the max suit you then get a 10 minute respawn timer on your max suit which it starts as soon as you equip it so you can't equip a max suit for more than 10 minutes between each one. So that's basically every single class now, the easiest way to well to get to combat, you've got a few ways to do it. The easiest way to do it would be to join a squad. If it's the first time you're playing the game, you automatically get put into a squad. But if you've already logged into the game once before and then you want to join a squad again, you press M, and then you go down to the social, and you will have the squad tab. Now let's pretend that I haven't already joined a squad. We will now have lots of different in mean squads to choose from easiest way to do it, all you've got to do is click join now now you'll be in a squad hopefully everyone will be on Indar yep and we'll, as soon as there's a squad you can see anyone that's actually in your squad by the numbers so number 10 in the squad is currently there, 9's there, 2's there etc etc now if I wanted to go play with my squad members I can either I can see that I have the deploy button there or I can instant action straight to my squad leader. So I click on the squad leader and deploy. It will now send me over to him. Well, send me to the closest spawn point to him which will be the NC Research Lab. I will get drop podded in. Once we wait for it to load up. There we go, it's loaded up. I'm now at the closest put spawn point to my squad leader, which like it says is the NC Research Lab. And we can now start fighting from here. Uh, we then want to 
as we are all pushing over to Perry's Hamp Station, that means we want to all go down here. I'll try and get over to there and start attacking. Um, so that's the basics of how you actually get around the map, or how to get into a fight, what you actually want to attack, what you want to defend. Um, hopefully that should be enough for the first video. I'll probably have another video up soon showing attacking, mean about us attacking a base and. I'll have some other tutorial videos including vehicles, how to use a vehicle, what each base is like, etc, etc. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did please like and subscribe and I'll see you in, in the future videos. Goodbye.